We have often been asked about the type of lighting faults that you might be expected to find during an electrical assessment. And we've also been asked about the types of faults to expect in installations of a certain age. Not surprisingly, they are pretty much the same faults and it should be within the capabilities of everyone to find these during an inspection and test on an actual installation or during an electrical inspection and test assessment. In the domestic world, lighting circuit faults are common and we will show you some of these in this video from Learn Electrics. So why do we have lighting faults? Usually because somebody has done something. For example, householders moving wiring to decorate with those famous last words, don't worry, I can remember how they go back together. Or non-electrical trades adding lights whilst they refurbish the room. And self-inflicted from lack of experience or lost concentration. Lots of reasons, but if you follow a methodical approach to fault finding, to inspection and testing, then you will find the problem. And always remember safe isolation of circuits before starting work. Let's begin with an example of overfusing. This happens when a circuit breaker or a fuse is installed that far exceeds the expected working current of the circuit. And this is often the result of the person installing it, the householder doing some DIY etc, not knowing what they are doing. This example shown here shows a 32 amp breaker protecting a lighting circuit that is wired in 1.5mm conductors that was spotted on site recently. A number of problems here. BS7671 recommends that the circuit breakers for lighting circuits should be 16 amps as a maximum and in this case 6 amps would have been more than sufficient. Also, 1.5mm copper conductor has a maximum rating of 20 amps. This shows the importance of visual checks. A common problem, especially after DIY work and a good one for electrical assessments, is that the lamp never comes on. In this example, it will be from an incorrectly wired switch, perhaps after some decorating or changing the switch plates for shiny new ones. Let's look at this. To begin, make sure that you are familiar with the three plate ceiling rows. One brass block with two terminal holes, that is always the switch block. A centre brass block with three terminal holes, always the live loop block. And lastly, a block of three on the outside that is always the neutral block. That is the allocation for these brass blocks and we do not change them. Here is a good lighting circuit, fault free. Current can flow into the circuit, through the loop, down to a switch terminal, through the switch to the common terminal and up to the switch block. Current then travels along the lamp wire, through the lamp and back to the neutral block. From the neutral block, it then travels back to the consumer unit. If all this happens, the lamp will light up. Now look at this circuit. Notice that the two wires at the switch are connected one into each switch terminal, but none in the common. Unless one of these is in the common terminal, nothing is ever going to happen. It is impossible for the electricity to complete the path back to the ceiling rows and through the circuit, and the lamp will never light up. Another example of the lamp never coming on is a result of bad terminations. Here is a correctly terminated conductor in a cutaway view of a terminal. The screw is firmly clamping the copper against the metal of the terminal. And here is an example of a bad termination, common after DIY work, and an easy fault to simulate for an assessment. The screw is trapping the PVC insulation against the terminal. The insulation is doing exactly what it is designed to do. It is insulating the copper from the terminal and preventing current flow. An added danger of this fault is that arcing and sparking may result if the copper is close to but not touching the terminal and this situation could give rise to fires. Let's have an opposite scenario now. The lamp is always on, again a result of incorrect terminations. Compare this to the good example of a few slides ago. Someone in their wisdom has connected the lamp wires between the live loop and the neutral blocks. This means that the switch has been bypassed and the lamp is permanently energised. 
it will never turn off. To restore order, move the lamp wire from the live loop block to the empty hole in the switch block. We can look at two-way switching now and show you a frequent problem that is encountered, the so-called master switch problem. Sometimes the switches work as they should do and sometimes they don't. One of the switches seems to control the other. If it is in a certain position, then no matter what you do with the other switch, the lights do not change state. Again, we will start with a good two-way lighting circuit. Any switch will make the light take the opposite state from on to off to back on and back off again. Now look at our problem circuit. The switching just doesn't seem to make sense. Switch B must be in a certain position for switch A to work. Check the wiring between the two switches. Whichever wire is in the common terminal of one switch must be in the common terminal of the other switch. If you are using 3 core plus earth strapper cable, then the 3 cores are different colours and easy to identify. If it is all singles of the same colour, then a little ringing out or continuity testing is called for. Easy to do. Restore the cabling as per the previous slide and all should now be OK. As an assessor, this is one of my favourite faults to put on the boards for the students. This next one, the fuse blows, is often the result of incorrect wiring. You will come across this in a workday situation, but not many assessors will deliberately put this as a live fault because of the excessive currents that flow. This is what I've come across occasionally. The switch cable coming from the switch and going back to the ceiling rows has not been terminated into the switch block. Whoever's done it has terminated it into the neutral block. The result is that every time the switch is turned on, there is a direct short across the line and neutral. The fuse will blow, the breaker will trip, of course they will. This is often a result of a lack of knowledge and the person assuming that all blue wires are neutrals. This is why electricians mark the ends of the switch cable with brown sleeving, as an indicator that this is not a neutral conductor. Next, the RCD trips every time that the switch is operated a result of incorrect wiring into the neutral bars by the installer. Let's look. This is a correctly connected consumer unit. I've left the light switches off for clarity. Notice that the lamp is connected to an MCB on the RCD number 2 side of the board. The current travels from the MCB to the lamp along the line and back on the neutral. Because the line comes from the RCD number 2 side, the returning neutral conductor must go into the number 2 neutral bar marked N2 here. Line and neutral must stay faithful to their own RCD and neutral bar. Now this consumer unit is incorrectly wired. The returning neutral wire is in neutral bar number 1. The line has come from the number 2 RCD and returned to the number 1 RCD. There is an imbalance of current at both RCDs and one or both will trip. With the switch in the off position, the RCDs can be reset and nothing happens. But as soon as we try to turn the lights on, bang, the RCDs operate. Again, an easy fix. Make sure that the line and neutral conductors stay as pairs on the same RCD. And this is another favourite assessment fault of mine. And there we have a few faults for you to consider and understand. Always remember safe isolation when working because you will find out first if it is still switched on. Ask the customer the question, when did the lights last work correctly? And what have you done since then to make them fail? Always start at the ceiling rows. Have we got power coming into the room? Is the neutral connected? Does it return to the consumer unit? Without a complete circuit, nothing is going to happen. Be methodical in your inspection and testing. Draw or photograph what you see before dismantling. At least then you can get back to where you started. And follow the circuit from where the line comes in through the switches and lamp back to the ceiling rows and then through the neutral and out of the circuit. And there we are. We hope you've enjoyed this video and learnt a little more. It all helps. Thank you for watching this video. It is very much appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. 
And you'll find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget, you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel. Don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.